Today I'm going to explain the optional method for a single family calculation to find a demand load. Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the demand load for our optional method, okay, using the optional method. Been getting a lot of questions from, you know, students that have taken their electrical exam uh, here in New England and have been asked questions on the optional method. Now, the optional method is a little bit different than the standard method, and if you want to check out my videos on the standard method, um, I have them in the link above. Uh, click the playlist, watch them all the way through, I break it down step by step. Today I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to break down the demand load, uh, which is basically five steps that we're going to go through today to find the demand load. It's a little bit different, so we're going to talk about it. Okay, so the first step we have to do is the same as we would use in the standard method. We're going to go over a couple different things, but the, the three most important things that we have to worry about in the, in the first, whether you're doing standard or the optional method, is we need to know the total square footage of the dwelling, we need to know how many small appliance branch circuits we're going to be installing, and we need to know how many laundry circuits we're going to be installing. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to use the multiplier on the 22012 table and we're going to multiply the single family dwelling by 3. So we're going to take 2000 and multiply it by 3 which will give us 6000. What we also have to remember is we're going to calculate our calculate our small appliance brand circuits at 1500 VA per circuit. So minimum code requires is two. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 1500 by two because we have two small appliance branch circuits and this is going to give us 3000. According to code, our laundry branch circuit is going to be taken at 1500 VA this is something that stays contained to the laundry room so anything that's added over and beyond is irrelevant in this room we're talking just the laundry branch circuit we're going to take that at 1500 va we only have one so we're going to add 1500. so by taking these here all we're going to do is we're going to add this up and we're going to put it to the side So we come up with 10,500. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do, just like we would in the standard method, we're gonna go through our whole list of everything that's gonna be installed into the dwelling. We have things that are required to be in the dwelling that's on this calculation. So this is what we're gonna go through, and I'm, I'm gonna show you what we're talking about, and then we're gonna explain it. We're gonna explain it a little bit deeper. So we have a hot water heater at 5,000 watts. We have a dishwasher pulling 1,300 watts. We have a disposal that's uh, pulling 1,127 11, 1, watts. We have a dryer, 5,000 watts. We have a range at 8,500 watts. Now, you can see in this part of the calculation, we are not adding any heating or cooling or largest motor, any of that stuff at this point. That's going to be in another video. Uh, we're going to break down that next step, hopefully in the next video. So why do we need to know all this stuff? Well. In the standard method, we need to do the next step after we find our general lighting, we go into finding fixed appliances. In the optional method, we are going to be incorporating the fixed appliances into the demand load because in the optional method, we don't call it the general lighting load. We just basically did the general lighting load, but they don't call it the general lighting load. Basically what we're doing is we're adding everything together and then we're going to take it and use a different demand factor. So. You know, when we're following the optional method, you're going to want to use Article 220.82, and you're going to follow through uh, B and C, which is 
basically going to break down what you're going to be putting in and what you're not going to be putting in this part of the calculation. Okay, so at this point, what we're going to do, I had already gone through and broken down my amperages and my horsepower and everything like that. And I'll do another video on how to find all that stuff later. Um, I believe I might have it in the, um, in the description above, but you know, if, if it's not there, I'll, I'll probably do another video on it. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is you're going to calculate your fixed appliances. So all your fixed appliances, hot water heater, dishwasher, disposal, those are the ones you need to worry about. Forget the method in the, in the standard. You're just going to, you're going to add all this stuff together. So you got to find the total wattage or VA. Then you're going to add in, instead of having your own line for a dryer and the range, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to be adding all of this stuff into this part of the calculation. Again, some people find this easier. The calculation numbers are pretty close. Um, you know, you're going to come out with the same answer regardless. Um, one is broken down a little bit different than the other. So, you know, again, what method you decide to use is totally up to you. A lot of questions have been coming in about the optional method. So I'm here, I'm doing the video for you. So what do we do? When we get to the dryer, the same rule applies to the dryer. If you have a nameplate less than 5,000 VA, okay, you're going to put whatever that nameplate rating is. When we're calculating the dryer, in the standard method, if it's less than 5,000, you put 5,000 in the dryer line, or you put the nameplate rating, which is ever higher. Okay, we're looking for the greater at that point. In the optional method, you're going to use the nameplate rating. And for this calculation, I use 5,000 watts, but it doesn't really matter if I had 4,300 watts, you would put 4,300 watts. If you had 4,000, you would put 4,000. So, you know, in the optional method, there is a little bit different rules. Just make sure you follow the code book. And I, I am working out of the 2017 code book at this point. So, you know, just kind of bear with me. If you haven't already opened up your code book and started highlighting some stuff, you might want to consider doing that. Your dryer, or excuse me, your range is going to be calculated the same way. Your range, you're still going to follow all the rules, but what you're going to do is you're not going to be using the demand factor out of it. You're going to be using the nameplate rating. So the optional method, you're going to use the nameplate rating for everything. So all of these fixed appliances, dryer, and range is all calculated on your nameplate rating. So what we're going to do is we're going to add all this up. Okay, so what we did is we took the 10,500 that we had from the first three things that we did, our branch circuits and our square footage VA. Then what we did is we added in everything on this line here, which is our small, uh, we added this in here, which is our fixed appliances and our dryer and range. We add everything together, we come up with a total of 31,427. The rule changes just a little bit in this. <clears throat> okay, so at this point, we're going to take our total 31,427, and we're going to minus our first 10,000. Again, just like we would take in the standard method, we would take the first 3,000 out at 100%. In the optional method, you're going to take the first 10,000 VA and take that at 100%. So we're going to minus this, and it is going to give us... Twenty-one. It's going to give us twenty-one four twenty-seven. Now, in the code book, it states that the remainder we must take at forty percent, not thirty-five percent, forty percent. Again, you're talking about two different calculations, but you're also calculating a couple different things. You're still going to come close to the same number, but not exactly. Okay. So we're going to take the remainder, which is 21,427, and we're going to multiply that by 40%. When I multiply the remainder by 40%, I get 8,570.80. Now, at this point, you can do one of two things. You can add the remainder, because remember, if we have anything greater than 5, 
we add, we round up, but if it's less than five, we just drop it off the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into Eighty-five seventy-one. What do we do at this point? Now, to complete that demand load, to find total demand load, what we're going to do is we're going to take this 8,571, uh, 8, we're going to add the 10,000 to it, which is going to give us what? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add, after we did the remainder of the demand factor of 40%, we came up with 8,571. We have the first 10,000 at 100%. We're going to add the two together. Our total demand for our optional method is going to be 18,571. Uh, 18, we still have a few more steps to go. This is all I want to cover today. It's a, it's a basic calculation that you have to remember, but at the same time, this is all found in your code book. All you have to do is follow the methods. This is the first step in calculating the optional method for a single family dwelling. I'm gonna get into doing multifamilies. I'm gonna do the standard and the optional. I'm gonna get into doing non-dwelling, things like that in time, okay? We're gonna go step by step. One thing that I want everybody to remember is just follow the code book. The code book is gonna tell you exactly what you need to know, what percentages to take. The best part about following the code book is, you know, being higher or greater is, is never going to be a bad thing, but being too low can be. Okay. So one of the things that we have to remember is, you know, there, there are guys out there that do the standard method and then do the optional method and then take, which are, you know, take the average between the two. Either way, guys, you're going to get close to the same thing. At the same time, um, you know, again, this channel is growing like there's no tomorrow. I'm trying to give you, you know, some hands-on stuff. I'm trying to give you some lecture stuff, you know, just trying to keep it interesting. And, you know, the support that you guys are showing me, I, I just, I, I, I can't even express how great it feels um, to get this information, you know, to get my information to you and you guys responding back to me. Um, you know, again, like I said, Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions, um, if you have any other way of doing it, or if you know another trick of doing it. Listen, I'm an instructor. I learn things every day, just like I'm, you know, hopefully you guys are when you're out in the field. Just remember that, you know, there are some things that you may have been taught that may not be correct. There's also things that you may be missing. So, you know, because again, sometimes what happens is, is, you know, people are given misinformation and then they think that's right because, you know, they trust the person giving it to them. You know, one of the reasons I started this channel is because, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about electrical out there. Um, there are a handful of guys that, that I follow that are uh, really good. Um, so, you know, listen, we all work off of each other. You know, we're electricians. We all do things together. We all do things a little bit different. If this video helped, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions on how, you know, how to do things or if it wasn't explained clear enough, you know, shoot me an email, leave me a comment down below. Either way, I will do the best I can to get back to you guys uh, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, my email is starting to get backed up because I'm getting a lot of questions and I can't keep up with everything. So, you know, if you've sent me an email in the past, you know, recently or within the past couple weeks, please bear with me. I am getting to all of you. I just, it's one step at a time. If you haven't subscribed, please do me a favor. Please subscribe. As always, have a great day and be safe.